change. So what is, first of all, the dilemma? It's the dilemma of growth. And, and actually pitching it in terms of a dilemma is potentially a sort of, again, a forgiving place to be. The dilemma of growth is what? It's very, very simple. Continual material expansion. Growth is unsustainable in those terms. In the terms that we have it now, the growth economy is simply unsustainable. But it wouldn't be a dilemma if it didn't have a second horn. And the second horn is around the opposite, if you like. What do you call the opposite of growth? Well, amazingly, there is a term. It's called degrowth. Um, it, in the French, it's called um, décroissance, which I think of being a much more savoury term, almost something you might want for breakfast. Um, but it turns out, of course, that décroissance is, is unstable, that actually collapsing economies, falling economies, contracting economies uh, are not an easy place to be. I mean, you can say, of course, well, the growth economy is also unstable, but the thing that instills visceral fear into politicians is the instability of a falling economy. And the dynamics of that are important to understand, because if we don't understand the dynamics of that, we don't understand the resistance of politicians or economists to the idea of stabilizing economic growth. And if we don't do that, then there's no point at all in proselytizing against growth. So that was the framing of it, was to say there is a profound dilemma here. It's not a simple one. It's not one that we have instant solutions for. It's not one that we can say, well, you could take this off the shelf, plug it in tomorrow, and you've solved that problem. Thank you very much. It is actually a profound dilemma. And a part of what Prosperity Without Growth was trying to do was to open out political space to say, hang on a minute, this is an important dialogue. It's not to say that growth doesn't matter in developing economies. We recognize that. It's not to say that growth hasn't delivered some benefits. We recognize that. It is to say there is a dilemma here. And this dilemma is something that we actually deserve to give attention to and that politicians need to take notice of. And of course, you know, there is a sort of de facto solution in politicians' mind to this dilemma. It's the idea of decoupling economic output from material throughput. So we can keep the economy growing, but we'll reduce the material throughput. And a second part of that job in the report was essentially to say, how realistic is this strategy? Can we, have we, first of all, decoupled fast enough over, over a historical period? And the evidence there is blindingly obvious that we haven't. Actually, consumption patterns, consumption throughput, resource consumption, climate change, carbon emissions, water consumption, biodiversity loss are all increasing. We have not, in any sense, decoupled, even though one might, of course, expect an economy based around efficiency to have got more efficient, and yes, we did get built more efficient, we didn't ever decouple because scale outweighed efficiency all the way down the line, and we didn't get there. So um, you can say, of course, well, we didn't try hard enough. Um, how hard would we need to try? And there again, you know, simple scenario. Nine billion people in a world in 2050, all aspiring to Western European lifestyles with economic growth and trying to meet your carbon targets how fast would you have to run in terms of decoupling? And it turns out that you would have to reduce your carbon intensity by two orders of magnitude, much, much faster than anything that we've ever achieved historically. And that's the point at which you have to say to politicians, are you really serious? Is this actually just a form of magical thinking that we're engaging in, that technology will come out of the blue and save us simply because we've articulated that magical number two degrees see rise in the Copenhagen Accord and put our names behind it without any emission targets whatsoever, that that will be sufficient to deliver the technology. And it is a critical point, I think. It's a critical point for everybody to say this has been the default strategy around the dilemma of growth up till now, and it isn't good enough.